On today's episode of the Kansas City Chiefs Report, we got some winners and losers from Chiefs Mandatory Minicamp. My name is Harrison Graham from Chat Sports. Let's go ahead and dive on into it as all these players are now off until training camp. Let's start with the winner. That is Patrick Mahomes, of course, the quarterback, as uh, he, uh, he tends to be in the winner category in life quite a bit. Um, I just like his attitude, his mindset about everything, and he's never complacent. Uh, he uh, had this to say in terms of what their approach has been this offseason. He said, even though we won last year, talking about the Super Bowl, we knew we had a lot of places to improve. I thought guys had that mentality coming into OTAs and into minicamp. It's been a great OTAs and minicamp. I think one of the best I've ever been a part of. And it just got me thinking. And, you know, the Chiefs had their ring kind of gala last night where they got their new – Super Bowl rings, and he put a story on like uh, Instagram, like not done yet. Of you just think about what this guy is saying. It's like he's never complacent, man. They've won back to back Super Bowls, three out of five, and he's sitting there saying, like, yeah, we won it last year, but uh, there was clearly areas we needed to improve. And honestly, he's not wrong. Last year was probably the worst regular season they've had uh, in this run. It was from a win loss standpoint, but. It just big picture, it got me thinking. It's like, that's some Tom Tom Brady mindset shit. Like, we've won two in a row. You could easily, not mail it in, but kind of just half-ass OTAs. It's OTAs, who cares, right? Well, not for the great ones. That it, The great ones never take time off. Like, sure, you might take a week or two off from a high-level intensity training standpoint, but mentally, you're never out of it. You're always thinking about the next day, the next rep, the next practice, the next play, the next game. Um, because it, Kelsey said it last week. He said, look, we haven't had that, uh, you know, that mentality, or we haven't even talked a lot about going back to back to back. You can't think that way. You got to think about today's practice. And it's like, it's June, man. Like us on the outside, it's like, ah, it's OTAs. It's mini camp for the Chiefs. Who cares, right? Well, these guys get it. You know, Mahomes and Kelsey, Chris Jones, these guys, they, they, they're, they're on a different planet when, when it comes to chasing greatness. So, uh, it just makes me appreciate that Patrick Mahomes is in a Chiefs uniform because uh, he truly is one of the greatest to ever do it. Show some love to QB1. Get the 15s going down in the comment section below. Patrick Mahomes, um, man, what a player, what a leader, uh, what a winner for the Kansas City Chiefs. All right, let's go to Xavier Worthy here. He's in the loser category. Not for anything he's done wrong, but, you know, I would say for rookies, OTA's minicamp, it is very important, um, and obviously he's been banged up with a hamstring injury, so uh, he hasn't been out there. He's been missing out on some reps. Now, I'm not going to sit here and make some huge deal out of this. It is June after all. It's not going to make or break this kid's season, but, you know, you're losing out on some physical reps, right? Other guys are getting opportunities, so ideally you want him out there and you want him getting those reps, learning the new offense, building that chemistry with Mahomes. Is it a huge deal? No. Is it going to derail his career, even his rookie season? I would be shocked. But uh, you'd like to see this guy out there. Hopefully that'll be the case for training camp. If he's not there to start training camp, I'd actually be worried because that would be almost two months since when he first suffered this hamstring injury earlier on in OTAs. Uh, but uh, obviously, if you're the Chiefs, you're not going to push this in June. But in an ideal world, you would have him out there taking those reps. Now, speaking of the rookie first-round pick, if you want to rep Xavier Worthy, get his jersey, chatsports.com slash worthy. That link will be in the comments and in the description of this video. Click and shop today, chatsports.com slash worthy. Sticking with receiver Marquise Brown, he's a winner. I just, man, I like the vibes around this guy and the fit on this team right now. I loved him coming out of Oklahoma. It's kind of been up and down for him in, the, in his NFL career, but... Mahomes said it yesterday. He's like, I, I just continue to be shocked we got this guy on a one-year deal for the price that we did. What was it, one year, $7 million, up to like $11 million? I mean, that's for, for his skill set and what he can bring to this offense, that's kind of a steal. And, uh, yeah, he's been inconsistent. He's had some drop issues in the past. But this is one of the fastest football players in the NFL. Uh, the Chiefs have continued to harp on the fact that they want the vertical passing game to return to their offense this year. He is one of the best at doing just that. You you know, forget Tyree Kill. You think of a guy like Deshaun Jackson that's played uh, under Andy Reid before. I think he and Xavier Worthy can have that type of impact. 
I just think he's going to have a big year. I, I really do. I think Marquise Brown is going to have a big, big year for this team. I've said it. It wouldn't shock me if he led the receivers in receiving, especially if Rushy Rice uh, gets suspended. But even if he doesn't, it wouldn't shock me. Uh, now, I think Rice is a more better, well-rounded receiver. can work underneath intermediate. He's not a great deep threat, but um, you know he's going to get more targets when he's out there. But Marquise Brown, I mean, it wouldn't shock me if he had one of those years where he has like five touchdowns and 50 yards or more. Like, I really think he's going to make some splash plays for this football team. So what do you guys think? I'm going to throw this out there. 1,000-yard season for Marquise Brown? Take a guess. Y for yes, N for no. Um, it's, it's ballsy. It's up there. You still got Kelsey. You got Rice, uh, depending on how much time he may or may not miss. But, man, I, I, I'm very bullish on Marquise Brown's fit in this offense. I think we're going to talk in the middle of the season of, like, man, I wish you could have gotten him on a two-year deal because uh, he's probably going to get a lot of money next offseason. Joe Tooney, he's in the loser category as well. Uh, he's still injured. Like, this is, I think, quietly been lurking. Remember, he had that pec injury that cost him to miss the Super Bowl last year. Uh, Nick Allegretti had to start and played very well. He's now in Washington. Uh, He's still not cleared, man. And and, and that's a little concerning for me, considering we're talking, you know, five months later, basically, here. Here's Andy Reid saying, Joe's working his tail off and getting better. We've got to see exactly how that thing works. We've got to get clearance from the doctor and that whole process that goes on as we go. But he's making good progress. He'll be one of those guys that's kind of right on the border of whether he can go or not go from the healing part. We talk about when training camp gets here. And look, I mean, Andy Reid's kind of just saying it's 50-50 if he'll be ready for the start of camp. This is absolutely a story heading into training camp because this injury lingers or if there's some kind of setback or something like that, you've got question marks on the interior, man. I mean, you don't have Allegretti anymore, who was a great backup interior guy. You drafted Hunter Norzad out of Penn State, who I like. I really like him as a center, but can he play guard? You know, Mike Caliendo, can a guy like Lucas Niang or Kingsley Suomataya kick inside? Maybe, maybe not. But if Tooney's not out there, A, you're losing an all-pro caliber guard uh, to start the season, and B, your backups are kind of unproven. So, um, and by the way, I'm mentioning all that with the fact that you don't exactly feel great about left tackle. So, your left side of the offensive line entering training camp is very much a question mark, and uh, that's obviously uh, something to uh, be at least a little bit concerned about, in my opinion. How concerned are you about Joe Tooney's status? Scale of 1 to 10, I'll go 6-5. I'm not panicking, but I think this is more than just a, ah, this is no big deal. Like, I'm, I'm keeping an eye on this, and uh, you guys should as well. The last winner is Matt Areza, who has been on – a tumultuous journey. He got accused of being a part of a gang rape in college, had to fight that, um, was ultimately cleared, gets a second chance here with the Chiefs, goes through a punter battle, beats out Ryan Recco, who they just released uh, a couple of days ago, and uh, that means he's the guy, unless something changes, unless they go sign someone else. So he's going to be the punter. Uh, glad he's getting an opportunity here, and look, Andy Reid's a big believer in giving guys chances, and um, that's, uh, that's what they've done here. Uh, even though he was cleared, you know, the, in, in today's day and age, like it, it probably from a PR standpoint would have been better to just avoid this guy, right? Ah, you can go find another punter, but they wanted to give him a chance. He's, uh, earned the job up to this point. And, uh, look, that's a big position they're replacing. Tommy Townsend has been one of the best punters in the NFL over the last four years. He signed with the Texans in free agency. So, uh, Matt Arez has big holes to fill. Not only is the punter, but he's also got to be the holder for Harrison Butker, one of the better kickers in the league. So uh, we'll see how he does, but uh, he's gotten this opportunity, and uh, we'll see if he can run with it uh, once the season gets here. There you have it, mini camp winners and losers. The guys are off on break until July for training camp, but we're not. We're going to be here. Hit that subscribe button. We will continue to cover the Chiefs on a daily basis. So go ahead and subscribe, and we'll see you guys soon. 